I really didn't want to do this today, not gonna lie to you guys. Uh, my last video, if you haven't seen it, I'll, I'll link it down below, is essentially me taking a big steaming dump on Nex for like 10 minutes straight. And I still think all of those things, but I'm not going to say them without explanation. So, today, I'm going to be telling you guys exactly why I personally think Nex is a terrible boss. Uh, at least in my own opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of the people that I have talked to about this. And, okay, guess what? <laughs> I'm going to be putting my money where my mouth is, because this, uh, this is a sweaty Sunday. <laughs> you guys did it. Are you happy? You wanted to see Nex? You're going to see Nex. We're going to go kill Nex for eight hours straight. Wish me luck. Here is the gear setup we're gonna be rocking. Now, I know technically Rapier and Torba is best in slot, but for people who have done this, they know that in practice, it's a huge pain and it's very easy to lose DPS. So, we are going to be rocking the ZCB max range setup. Thralls definitely add up over time. Death Charge will help with ZCB specs. And of course, we pack yak the bruise because uh, as everybody knows, this is just basically a bruise simulator. It's one of my many issues with it. Quick refresher on Sweaty Sundays, we do a boss for 8 hours straight in the best possible gear as efficiently as possible, and if we don't manage to beat the projected GP, we have to give away everything we made in the video. Last episode was Corporeal Beast, so congrats to RSN Nilehorn for winning that, add me in game to collect your prize. If you want to win this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment with your RSN. But first, today's sponsor. Manscaped.com, which I'm almost certain you've heard of, but if you haven't, they are the global brand for grooming and hygiene products. Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulations to combat the big three odor zones. That is your body, your butt, and your balls. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of stuff from their new all-in-one performance package 4.0, so let's go check it out. All right, so here is the package they sent me, and the first thing to check out, obviously, is the Lawnmower 4.0, which they actually they sent me two packages, which I think is a mistake, but it's the best mistake they could have ever made because now I have one of these for each ball. So this thing is Manscaped's fourth generation electric and waterproof, by the way, trimmer with advanced skin safe technology so you don't nick and cut all of the areas that you really do not want to be nicked. So the lawnmower has this super smart little cordless charging station, which bam, just pop it in right like that. And these LEDs on the bottom right here will tell you how much battery power you have left, which is up to 90 minutes on a full charge. Fun fact, if you press this little button on the front three times, that will enable the travel lock mode, which is a pretty neat little feature. Now, also in the performance package 4.0 are two things that you never really knew you needed until you use them. I'm talking, of course, about the crop preserver and the crop reviver. The Crop Preserver is a ball deodorant. You just put that thing on right out of the shower and you have all day odor protection. And the Reviver is just whenever you need a little spritz to freshen up your, uh, your area. Oh, fresh. And of course, Manscaped has you covered head to toe with the Weed Whacker Electric Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. This comes with the same skin safe technology that the lawnmower does. So once again, you don't need to worry about your sensitive little nose hairs being tugged on. Now, for a limited time, you guys will get all of this plus two free gifts, which are the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping and your two free gifts using the promo code TASTY at checkout. Thank you again to Manscaped for supporting me and my balls by sponsoring this video. And remember, Manscaped always use the right tools for the right job. All right, so ideally we're going to be doing this boss in about a four to an eight man scale, which seems to be the most popular for people farming this boss. Uh, the trip length is usually long enough for you to have the KC required to re-enter at the end of the trip. And because I'm going to spend the rest of this video complaining, I am going to start off with something I like, which is how the room KC is handled here. The minions outside give multiple KC up to like five or six, I think, as do the minions inside the actual boss room. So KC is extremely fast to get and it builds up very, very quickly. This is one of the biggest TDMs of God Wars that I'm glad they took the steps to remedy, but the fun and game stop there because as soon as you enter the room, it goes downhill. The first thing you're greeted with here is a 17-minute monologue, and I think it is nice to have time for your team to get ready, but holy hell, this is just ridiculous. Uh, it is invulnerable during this portion too, and guess what? 
you're still allowed to attack it. It just eats your attacks and wastes your supplies. The single worst thing in the world is when you click this boss one game tick too early and you waste your successful ZCB spec. Just, Jagex, please make it so you can't attack when it's invulnerable. Plenty of other bosses do this. Anyway, phase one. A player is selected to cough based on the lowest magic defense and their stats are drained. Totally fine with this one. It lets players select who takes the tank so they can gear and strategize accordingly. Good. The other mechanic is a nightmare style Ferrari attack, which I don't mind the dodging portion, but guess what? It is once again invulnerable and you gotta sit there for a few ticks before you can attack again. It's not a major annoyance, it really isn't, but this invulnerability is a huge theme in the fight and as you're going to see, it really adds up. When it reaches 80%, you have to kill her minion and guess what? <laughs> She's invulnerable again and you can still attack her. Like I said, not a huge deal, but a theme. Uh, you kill her minion. And now it's time for everybody's favorite, Shadow Phase. TLDR for this phase is the closer she is to you, the more damage she is going to do. So the mechanic combines with her tank swap to become pretty much the most annoying thing in the game. Wouldn't mind if we could have some more control over who is tanking that would make this phase a little bit more bearable. But she'll swap every so often and then randomly sprint at people. So if everybody is grouped up, everyone will take a lot more damage. But if everyone is split up then she's going to run out of most people's Tebow range, and it's just generally annoying. Um, also, she will randomly hop across the arena, which, guess what? She's invulnerable when she does that, and your auto attack is nulled, so great. It, it, it just makes me think, like, why are these the mechanics? I, I, honestly, my biggest issue overall with this fight is that it feels like there's very little that you can do to improve the experience for you and your team. You're not rewarded for high level gameplay and on the flip side you're not punished for messing up all right you're just going to get a constant barrage of damage from the auto attacks all right and you're gonna be sitting there drinking your drinking your brews that's it it feels very reminiscent of the original nightmare which is arguably the most hated piece of content ever released in old school and i would not be surprised if we ended up seeing a fasani style update for nex in the future I genuinely want to know everybody's thoughts on Next so far. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Leave it in the comments and I promise you I will read all of them because I, I want to know. Now, before we dissect the rest of the fight, we are approaching four hours into this challenge. So let's see if anything fun has happened. Shit down the Bandos world record, V2. Uh, yeah, I'll just do that again. V3, I mean. He already did the V2. I might just do that shit again. Oh, you like Good luck. Taste my cum. Come on. Oh no, wait, I said taste my cum, god damn it. <laughs> oh, all right, Benny Benny. So all right. Oh my god, we finally did it. Oh, it. It's only been 40 kills, we're like halfway done, but it actually feels like it, it's been hours, bro. This boss is... Ugh. Nobody wants to do this boss. It's so hard to find a team, it's actually insane. Uh, we're going to keep plugging away. Hopefully we can see one more drop. I would be extremely ecstatic, hopefully in my name. Ah, oh, 29 that's minutes? Just yours. That's, yours. that's not that's bad. Just yours. That's, that's actually, that's actually pretty old. good. <laughs> for yeah, a 7 yeah, man? Yeah, like... Let's go. Hey, yo. Alright, back to the desk for the third phase here. At 60%, you kill the next minion and she transitions into blood phase, which, side note, every time you transition phases, you have to wait like 5 seconds for the next minion to cast an animation and start the phase, during which... She is a model and would eat all of your attacks. Just please, dear God, make it so we can't attack her during this. Holy hell. Anyway. Quickly after she transitions, uh, she will do the Blood Siphon attack, maybe instantly or maybe in 20 seconds. It's random, there's no way to tell. Uh, which is important, because when she does, not only is she once again invulnerable, but she will heal the damage you attack her for, so just be aware. Now, phase four is the ice phase, and I don't actually mind this one too much. It's slightly engaging and relatively fair, as is the final phase. Uh, there's not a whole lot to do, and it is marred by the general discomfort of the boss as a whole. But I really think the heart of the issue is that a lot of people, when Next came out, were expecting a Raids-level piece of content. And what we got was God Wars. And it's important to note that, in a way, I do see this as a good thing because it shows how much boss design and player skill levels have come in the past few years. And our expectations for new content are high. I know for a fact Jagex can make engaging pieces of content. And plenty of JMods are good at the game and understand how to do that. But it seems like nobody playtested this encounter. They just ripped it out of RS2 and sent it our way. Now, the very final thing I want to touch on mechanically is the red X that they, I guess, fixed. Um, I think a lot of people are focused on whether or not the red X strat should have been removed or not. 
And if you are unfamiliar, there was a mechanic where standing under the boss and performing an action with a red X, like clicking an item or a door or something, would just stall the boss and make it sit there and not attack anybody. People had some serious discussion about whether or not they should take that out of the encounter or let it be the meta. Um, and I think that is entirely the wrong question, right? The question we need to be asking is why players felt the need to do that in the first place. The answer is that the constant barrage of unavoidable damage is a shitty mechanic. People were fundamentally trying to make the boss not do what it's programmed to do. So very clearly there is a deeper issue than the Red X itself. Just some food for thought. Enough about the mechanics, let's talk about the numbers. So we did end up finishing that eight hour session and you might notice a distinct lack of actual clips from that session. Uh, and that's just because it was boring and the drops are too rare. All right, they actually nerfed the drop rate a while ago from 1 out of 43 to 1 out of like 53, I think it is now, which it, for the first time in the history of old school RuneScape has caused the items to currently be worth more than they were on the day of release. That doesn't happen. That shouldn't happen, but it is happening. This boss is by far the best money in the game right now. It's like 10 mil per hour, roughly. It's disgustingly good money. Which is crazy considering because I had so much trouble putting a team together. Nobody wanted to do it. It's the best money in the game and I can't get a single person to join my team. Whatever, it's totally fine. We ended up getting 65 kills during this whole journey. I did die for a few of them. Don't worry about that. So the kills weren't tracked, but we ended up making just over 35 million GP. It's definitely a little short of the 80 mil that we were expected. So I do lose this challenge, which means essentially you guys win. So guys, remember to leave your arse in the comments, like the video, and be subscribed for a chance to win this week's loot. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. I will see you next time. And remember, stay tasty. Don't even think for a second, nigga you might need a moment You were only given one shot like a buzzer beater but you stoned it Brick house, brick house, brick house, brick house Living bricks at the studio, here's a brick on the house Here's a brick on the house, yeah you know they're coming quick Just like SWAT in the drug bus, but I'm slick bitch, call me Rick You never knew that your girl called just to come through for the day Ah, oh, that's a wrap, that's a wrap boys